All right, so at this point, you should have all of your parts made for your cube puzzle. Uh, you design them all as separate parts on SolidWorks and save them each with their own unique name. Uh, so now what we're going to do, that the parts are all made, is we're going to do what's called assembly. So again, you're going to open up SolidWorks, and you'll go to New, either right here or you... Or you can click on File and go to New. Either one is going to get you to where you can open assembly. So we'll click now. And so you made all your parts, and now we're going to put them together in what's called an assembly file. So we'll click on assembly. And it'll take just a second to open up. Okay, and there we go. So now it knows I'm going to want to open up files. So I could just go grab a part out of here. There's my green part, my pink part, and my white part. You probably have more parts than just three, but that's what I made for this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my green part. And when I double click on it, it's going to go ahead and bring my green part in here and it's going to drop it into my assembly. Okay. Now that's kind of a hassle because I want the other two parts also and it went and shut that open uh, screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to assembly and I'm going to say insert components and that's going to reopen that screen to let me bring in more stuff. Um, and if I want to be able to bring in both the other parts without having to reopen it, I can click this little pin right here. Um, uh, maybe I have to select one of these first. But I already opened the green part, and that's what you're seeing right here. This is a temporary file. It's saying, oh, okay, your green part is open. So we have a, we've created a temporary file that it's going to allow you to make adjustments to it without saving over the original until you tell us to do so, is what that says. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the pink part and bring it in. And I'm going to click, and it closed. Anyways, if I click that thumbtack, it would let me, I'm going to do this right here. If I close this and I click the thumbtack, you see how that changed? Now, if I go to browse, it's going to allow me to come in here and I can open up the white part and bring the white part in here. And you see how I was able to bring that in without this closing. Now, sometimes you want, I want a whole bunch of one part. For example, in the train project, you're going to use the wheel four times. So if you hit the thumbtack, you could then bring in that part multiple times and say I wanted four of them. And then I can say, okay, done with that. Uh, now, I don't actually want it four times, so I'm going to go back in. I'm going to delete uh, the additional occurrences. So I really only want each of these parts once, because if you remember, one of the rules were that you could only use a part once. You couldn't have any duplicate parts. Okay, so I've got my three parts in here. You're probably going to have four or five or six or seven parts on your assembly. Now what we're going to do is start sticking it together, telling this thing how to behave. Now if you'll see, when I grab the pink part, I can move it around. When I grab the white part, I can move it around. When I grab the green part, I can't move it around. That's because the green part was the first part I brought in. So it's the first one listed over here. And if you notice this F right here, that stands for fix, which means it's grounded. It can't move. Now, if I really want it to be able to move, I can right click on it and I click float. And now the little F disappeared. And if, if I wanted to, now I can move this guy around, but it doesn't matter. Uh, usually the first piece you bring in is kind of your base component, and it might be something that you want grounded anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and click fix to get that F back in there so it can't move. Okay, so now let's start putting this thing together. And let's say, hey, this white one was supposed to be right on the front of that green guy, right about there. It actually looks really good, right? And you're like, oh, okay, well done. It's, it's there. And I might get it really close, but if I zoom in, I'm going to see that it, it's not actually there. There's still a gap there. Um, and it can move around anywhere it wants. So we really do want to get this thing actually fully constrained in there. And the way we do that in CAD is called mating. So we're going to click mate. And it's going to say, go ahead and select some things. And as I select different edges or faces, it's going to tell me what I can do to them, what kind of constraints I can do. Okay, so there's two ways to do constraints. You can do faces, you can do edges. Uh, faces take a little bit longer, but they might be a little easier as you're first learning. Uh, as you get better at them, you'll probably start using edges more often. So I'm going to show you faces first. If I tell this face and this face, if I click on both of those, they're both highlighted in here, and it's saying, hey, do you want to make them coincident? What that means is, do you want to make them coplanar? Do you want them to be on the same plane? And I'm going to say yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. And sometimes a guess is wrong, and maybe you need to change it to one of the other constraints in here. But a coincident does make those two faces coplanar. And I'm going to say yes, please. 
And, um, and now, the nice thing about SolidWorks, if I push on the little dial on my mouse, if I push it on it, I can actually orbit this around. And I'm going to zoom in by spinning that dial, and I'm going to click on that bottom face, and I'm going to click on that bottom face. And it now just made them coincident, which again means coplanar. They are now on the same plane, and I'm going to say yes, that is what I wanted. And then I just need one more constraint to get these. You see how it's inside? They're inside each other. That's not what I want. Um, so I'm going to do one more. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell this edge of this gray guy to be right with this edge of the green guy. And again, it says, do you want them to be coincident, which means together. In this case, that's not coplanar. That's collinear, which means two lines on top of each other. And we're going to say yes. And that is now fully constrained right where I want it. If I close the mate, remember how I couldn't move my green one anyway because it was fixed? If it's fully constrained and I grab this white piece and I try to move it, it can't move at all because it is fully constrained onto the green one. Okay. Now let's do the pink guy. Maybe this pink guy is supposed to be in here, but it's actually supposed to be oriented differently. Maybe this tip of the pink is supposed to fit into that spot, that opening right there. What we can do, there's two options here. We have what's called move component, which is what I'm already doing when I grab it and move it, and you can see that highlighted. Or I can hit the arrow here, and I can go to rotate component. And if I do that, I can now grab this guy, and I can reorient it and say, okay, actually, that back peg in there is supposed to fit right in there. So now it's a little, it's more oriented the way I'd want it. Okay, and I can turn that off by saying, okay. And I'm going to go back to mate. And remember, we can do faces or edges. So the first time I was trying to use faces and making them coplanar, this time I'm going to do edges because it's a little quicker. I'm going to tell I want this front edge, this front bottom edge of this guy, to be right with the front bottom edge of this guy here. And when I click both, they become collinear. And I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to tell this back edge of this purple guy to be right with this edge of the gray guy. And now they're lined up. And I say okay. And that only took two steps. And now the guy is right where I wanted it. Okay. Now sometimes we mess up and we'll put a constraint on there that we didn't mean to. And then it'll conflict with the other constraints that we actually needed to have, So, which means we have to get rid of them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close mate. And if you see mates right under here, there's a little arrow. I can expand that. And it's showing that I've put five constraints on them so far. So that first one I can see was the two faces uh, that were coplanar with one another. This next one was the bottom faces of each coplanar with one another. This one was those two edges, collinear. This one was the front edges, collinear, and this is those other two edges in between the gray and the pink that are collinear also. Let's say we didn't want one of those. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, maybe eh, they're all good. Uh, maybe I didn't want this one right here. I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to say delete. And that can, it's going to say, are you sure you want to get rid of this constraint? I'm going to say yes. And now I only have four mates. And what you're going to see is I can now move these guys in and out because the current constraint that was currently holding it there no longer is. All right. Does that make sense? So at this point, go ahead, finish up the constraints with all your pieces until you have a fully assembled cube. Make sure you go and save your cube. <clears throat> um, it's just saying there's been some modifications, so we're going to say yes. Um, go ahead and save your cube. Make sure you save it to your G drive. If you don't see your G drive available down here, your drive file stream, make sure you go down to Windows and click on Drive File Stream, log into your Google account, and you'll see your Google Drive appear down there. Go ahead and save your assembly once it's fully assembled.